Charging up on the extreme outside, Gold Beret making a strong bid from You've third. been going to the races the all summer. The you haven't won a thing. And, and finally, you've bet on Gold Beret moving from the outside. Gold Beret by one lane. Gold Beret by two lanes. You've waited all year for a lock. You're already on, on your way to the winner's circle to cash in, win, Shepard place, and show. Except for one minor outside, problem. Watch the jockey as Gold Beret tries to go wire to wire, and he does not win. What? What? Let's see it from another angle. There's only one rule in horse racing. The jockey must be on the horse at the finish line. Missed it by that much. The photo finish says, Gold Beret and the Jockey, losers. Glory Hallelujah! It's the ESPN Sports Blooper Awards, featuring the greatest gas from every sport in the ESPN universe. You'll see the players who put the hard in hardball. The true meaning of fly patterns. And the down and out. You'll see lots of dangerous bulls. Life in the pits. Graceful ski action. Hardwood heroes. And the best of the rest. On the ESPN Sports Blooper Awards. Hi everybody, I'm Chris Berman, and you already know the name of the show. In fact, if you watch ESPN, you probably already knew that I'm Chris Berman. But if you don't watch ESPN, you'll have to take my word for it. Have I wasted too much time already? You see, we have a problem here. With this show, the problem isn't that we need more material. It's that we have too much of it. Ten plus years of broadcasting. Every single second of it on videotape. Where do you start? Our researchers spent so much time in the tape library, we equipped it with a bedroom and a kitchen. Under F in his index file, he had football, fencing, and a recipe for French toast. The awards were voted on by a panel of ESPN producers, directors, and most importantly, me. Their ballots were then forwarded to the impartial and very competent auditing firm of Berman and Berman, who have to this day kept the results a complete secret, and I'd like to commend my wife for that. There was so much to choose from that we even had a hard time agreeing on which sport to start off with. The producer said, let's start with baseball, but the director, Ball. He said, Bull, I like rodeo. But the editor likes racing, and she gets the last word. So racing it is, and away we go. Uh, no, no, not yet. No, no, all at once. No, away. Guys, guys, away we go. Come on. Go. Forget it. Well, then how about kicking off with football? Texas A&M. The field goal is good. I said the field goal was good. Oh, now it's good. About time. And finally, we're ready to get started with our Out of Bounders Award, collectively given to these guys who have as much fun off the field as on it. The wet weather game, huh? I said go deep, but not that deep. Pretty funny, huh? Real funny, depending on your point of view. To go this way. No, time out. No, I want a time out. No, give me some cord. I need more slack. Cut me some slack. No. Good, new. Nice cap. Hey, pretty good stuff. And now our nominees for the finest football blooper award. The first candidate, watch the swan dive, not his. His. 9-1, nice and warm. Next, watch the hold, perfect. And now what does he do? I don't want it, you have it. Oh great, just the way we wrote it up on the blackboard. Watch this punt. It's high enough, it's deep enough, it's long enough. It's three yards. Gumby could have done a better job. Remember when we were kids and we used to play football on our knees in the living room? He does. The next candidate's got to learn when to get out of the way. 
Dan Bernard Clark of the Miami Hurricanes hitting Dexter Carter of Florida State a little late. Stands over him. Dexter wasn't exactly amused. Said, forget the helmet. Try this, big guy. Bernard Clark with a look his mother would love. Now, this is one of my favorite sports, although I'm not exactly sure what it's called. I do know that it's called a blooper. It's the speed bump, then a great disappearing act. So long. This guy fights the big kahuna. Then the surfboard goes on a search and destroy mission. Here's another great new sport, full contact skateboarding. The object is to get onto as many blooper shows as possible. Look out, dude! <laughs> Gnarly, dude! Oh, dude. Ah, what a mega crash! I think we better practice this again. Dude. And now we move to the most blooper prone of all sports, rodeo. The object in bull riding is to stay on the ugly beast for eight seconds, with as much style as you can muster. That means only using one hand to hold on with and not screaming, HELP! no matter how close to death you think you are. Now, living life in the fast lane is one thing, but this, ridiculous. This is our third runner-up. Should have brought a parachute and a helmet and a gun. As we watch the second runner-up, it's important to remember that unlike baseball players, rodeo riders do not wear protective cups. That might explain why the rides are only eight seconds. This, by the way, is the first runner-up. And now the best of category. This rider practices by strapping himself to the outside of roller coasters. Like any self-respecting bull, this big guy ends the ride with a major league cowboy flip. Beef, real food for real people. I uh, think I'm gonna stick with chicken for a while. I like this next transition, listen to it. We've just seen the beast, so what do you have next? The beauty, pretty clever, huh? The beauty in this case is ESPN's Charlene Hawks. What does Charlene have to do with the bloopers? Well, whenever she reported from overseas for Scholastic Sports America, she did part of a report in the language of the country. Very nice touch, most of us wouldn't even dream about trying it. Charlene's mistake is that she lets her crew save the outtakes, which we're going to show you right now. ESPN. You got to the English part, that was a tough. ESPN for the Canal 5. Did I do it right? And now the greatest athletes in the world, playing the greatest non-contact sport in the world. Basket bang. This is basketball too. Basketball is the home of one of the most spectacular feats in sports, the slam dunk. When it's done right, it makes you jump out of your seat. Even when it's completely screwed up, it's still entertaining to watch. And speaking of fun to watch, let's turn to the Basketball Blooper Awards. First, nominations to a couple of out-of-bounders, a pair of players who like to mix it up with the fans. You'll get a kick out of this one, off one guy's foot, but two. When rivals like these get together, you can count on the unpredictable. For a deuce, actually this Nova player had a little help making the pass. A lot of players think today you're supposed to break something on a breakaway. This guy breaks into show business. 
Here's the debut of another small screen star. Ouch. White ball, red ball, white ball, red ball. This guy wins the Me, Myself, and I award for bringing the ball in all by himself. Hey, why waste the pass? And Sean Miller dribbled the ball inbounds without passing it. Well, I've seen that before in the NBA. That is incredible. But this young player wins the grand prize because on the evening of February 3rd, 1990, she made basketball history. The six gentlemen behind this golfer are the collective winners of the Sports Prank Award. They've secretly given the Ralph Cramden of their country club an exploding golf ball. They know he doesn't. Let's see it again. Watch the guys behind me. They laughed so long the next eight groups had to play through. When it was time to play real golf with a non-exploding ball, you think they shook him up? It took them nine hours to play 18 holes. But he's a good sport, and they are our Prank Award winners. Have you ever wondered where we get so much weird footage? Well, a lot of it comes from people like you. The golf footage was shot by a cameraman named Dave Figginshu on his own home VHS camera. If you have some funny footage you'd like us to see, send it to the Blooper Awards, Box 2196, Bala Kinwood, Pennsylvania, 19004. Maybe you'll win an official ESPN Sports Blooper Award worth Absolutely nothing, but hey, you'll be famous and you'll be in good company, like this next group of bloopers, winners in the miscellaneous awards category. Let's start out with our AT&T award for those excellent long distance connections. Unbelievable, right? But have you ever seen this happen in person? Talk about breaking cockeyed out of the gate. Watch out! This thoroughbred goes a little off course, but keeps on running. No, there is nothing wrong with your TV set. This race at Monmouth Park, alias Foggy Downs, was running a miss that you wouldn't take a walk in. The race favorite was picked because of his good sense of direction. Now, let's pick up the call. Endor. They race past the stands into the first turn with life's excellence in front on the outside. Equal to none is second as they disappear into the fog. From now on, you're on your own. Dola Hicka Makarakadola, and then it's Dicka Haka Makarakadola, and the trailer is Dola Rola Rola Rakadaka Molahola. What is he talking about? Now check out this play. Doink! Back to the holder. For what he thinks is a touchdown! This guy wins our Man in Motion Award. He was so effective that the play went for three yards. And this guy wins our Out Bang Award. The winner of the In Your Face Award. Again, Out Bang. The Major Indoor Soccer League has a rule that fans can keep any ball that goes into the stands. This rule obviously delights this woman. She now has maternity wear. Women's lacrosse, definitely a contact sport. Our What Did You Expect award to this spring splasher. Takes the dive, then panics. What do you think, it was a heated pool? Our Fool by the Pool award goes to this cameraman. What a dumb place to put your camera. This is an all-time classic. Also not a great place to put a camera, especially when it's dad. I bet it's a long time before he slices another shot. Oh. 
This high schooler wins the Daryl Dawkins Monobie Award. The Philadelphia Eagles are a pretty saucy bunch. Whether it's on the practice field or with the media, the leader of the pack is head coach Buddy Ryan, who has an award-winning style with the press. Why do you always remember the defensive players, not the offensive players? I remember who it was, dumb Let's go back, 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 back to the track. A clean start, kind of a dusty day, and everybody breaks fine. Then, something weird happens. Attention jockeys, attention jockeys, pull up your horses. Why? Attention jockeys, pull up your horses. It's the middle of the race. Attention jockeys, attention jockeys, the starting gate is on the racetrack. We've convened this panel of referees to choose the most exciting action that they've been privileged to see over the last couple of years. And here are their selections. A lot of these guys are retired bull riders who miss the excitement of the ring. What happens when a referee has a bad game? Answer, he gets benched. Thank goodness for the hockey helmet. It gives the ref something to hold on to. It also prevents players from scraping the paint off the goalpost with their heads. Hockey's one of those good news, bad news sports. The good news is, it doesn't hurt to slide on the ice. The bad news is, they play some obstacles in your way which do hurt. Ow! This is an incredible shot. He scores! This is an incredible fan. Hey, sit down, sit down, sit down! You too! Okay, now you're the referee. Is this a goal? Is it in, out, in, out, in, out? Maybe we do need instant replay. You heard of the hip check? That's the hat check. The envelope, please. The hockey bloop reward goes to these young men for action above and beyond the wall of duty. And oh, how the fans love it when their favorite opposing players are seated without a ticket. Of course, hockey isn't all fun and games. There are some genuinely bad intentions out there. And as the players get bigger and stronger, the game gets faster and more furious. And speaking of fast and furious, actually these are the little sprint and mini Indy cars that the NASCAR and Indy drivers cut and often lose their teeth on. This may be one of the toughest minor leagues in all of sports, but I'll tell you something, they sure do have a lot of big time crashes. These guys are even fun to watch when they're not in their cars. Racers spend years improving their techniques, learning what to do in crash situations. So by the time they make the big leagues, they know exactly what they're doing. If you've ever wondered what it's like being inside a race car, it's like being on the freeway. Hey, it's not paid for. I told you no passing on the left. Watch number 16 scrape the number off his roof. All gone. This truck looks like it's running on gas a haul. We can only wonder about the driver. You know something? I don't think my cruise control works. 
Man, I just hate when that happens. No, I'm telling you, make a left right here. Right, right there. Damn. And now for the wife and kids, the racing blooper award for this pit slide. He goes back to the mine. Before we move on, we thought we'd unveil a special treat for you. Now, most of you know about baseball and nicknames and yours truly. Well, as we head into a new decade, the 90s, we thought we'd unveil some nicknames of the 90s. They may or may not be famous by the time we hit 2001, but you be the judge. At first base, we're going to go with Dave Blind Justice, especially if he bats against reliever Craig Def Lefferts. Second base, Roberto Remember the Alomar. At shortstop, Eric Rebel Yelding, for you Billy Idol fans. Third base, your classic baseball name, Gary Sheffield of Dreams. Behind the plate, the youngster Todd Good Housekeeping Zeal. In the outfield, still when the Swallows return to Campusano. Mark, carry on my wayward son, for you Kansas fans. And Sammy Say It Ain't Sosa, fittingly plays for the White Sox. Our starting pitcher fittingly plays in Philadelphia, Bruce, two minutes for Ruffin. Our relief pitcher, for you American history fans, Bill, one if by Landrum. And the manager of this squad for the 90s, Jim Saturday Night Lefevre. Now, let's salute our national pastime. on a healthy hitting streak of 15 games and fouls one off to the left. Steve, we're told that Fernandez can throw the ball in the low 90s and he certainly looks that quick from up here tonight. Yeah, he is. He is throwing. Uh, He's throwing some smoke. smoke. Yeah. <laughs> the umpires having a good time because once the baseball blooper awards start they're fair game again this is our first nominee well what do you know shade not the ump though here's a high pop down the first baseline two players have a shot at it and the right fielder is shade Here's a little dribbler down the first baseline, even farther down the first baseline. A swing and a high fly to center field. Where is it? Misses it again and again and again. Another towering shot to center field. Why? 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 Another award nominee. Now once the guy beat out the ground ball, he can really motor. He just can't stop. 
Your attention, please, to the second baseman. Ow! With the hidden ball play. Give that man a nomination. Here's a fly ball to left. Looks like the Roadrunner being chased by Wiley Coyote. And watch the Keystone Cop slide. Nice. But here's the grand prize winner. Easy play for the second baseman. Over to first. Three out. But he forgets. Let's nail the catcher. Are you kidding me? What a great arm he has. And now it's time for our home video award winners. This junior leaguer either loves the national anthem or he has to use the little skater's room. In any event, a little too excited, here's what happens. Come on, Dad, turn off the camera, now. How is it that golfers who can't make six inch putts hit the camera every time? This horse stops on a dime. Ryder needs another 17 cents. In our never-ending series of ref abuse pieces, Crunch! Oh. the winner of our home video award. We receive many, many home videos for this show, and it's amazing how good most of them are, especially when you consider how much trouble professionals have. Let's take announcers, since it's the job I know the best, unless, of course, you're talking to my producers. We have to pay attention to the action, to our notes, to the TV screens. And this thing, which I hate, this little earpiece, which is called an IFB, the directors and the producers, I mean, they shout through this thing. Let's get rid of it. We also have to worry about the agents, the fans, coaches, viewers, and, of course, the TV critics. Now, I know you're holding back the tears, and I don't blame you. I'm going to show you two of our favorite announcers doing a simple pregame introduction. They make some injuries, and they have fought back to win four in a row. I think Larry Brown's got his club ready to play. Of course, they rely on Danny Manning. He might be the player of the year in college basketball. Ooh. It's a good thing I know how to take a hit, huh? You know, Conley, you're standing next to me. I get blindsided. you got to let me know about these things. I didn't see him coming either. Well, we'll watch out for the Wildcat on the roller skates during the game. I'm so proud of your ride. You took the charge, took it well. It's not roller derby, it's basketball. Now, this is reporter Dan Needles, who is gearing up for the fight of his life. He's about to attempt on camera a brand new water skiing technique. And here he goes, round one. He's starting out a little slow. Up on his toes now. Seems to be getting stronger, taking a little water in the face. A bit dazed, jabs to the ice, and he's down, he's down. Round two. He's up. He's looking very, very good. Nice footwork. He's feeling confident, and just like that, in a heat. Round three. Opening up his stance a little bit now. Oh, the awesome blow, he's just hanging on to what he's got. Round four. How much more of this can he take? I'm not sure I can watch. But an incredible heart. His corner is shouting instructions. On your deck, yeah. Oh, a tremendous roundhouse. Oh, he's out. Dan Needles wins the Participatory Journalism Award. We have these scenes from Los Angeles at rush hour. sport we've invented just for this show. Blue Blood Bowling. Watch the approach. Very nice. A double strike. Carrington McBarrington aboard Excalibur. Another strike. Perfect. 
Café Oive on her approach. Oh, a spare, a tough break. Lay down the top fluffy. They break stiffly right. Hang pins down. Cue the sound effect, please. Yes, it's right. Please, Brother Churchill. Oh, jolly good fun. This is capitalist delight. Catch them all. In the grand finale, we go to French. Also, Elaine. Magnifique. Perfect. The big strike. And now let's move back, 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 back to the track. This time to the Pacers. At least it starts out like a Pacer race. Looks like a normal race, but watch the two horses on the outside. The driver in front actually has the reins of the horse in back. Racing wide, further out is Chart Plate in third. Watch the driver in blue, Ben Hurrit. He has a chance to win this race riding like that. What? Finally, Spencer from the middle of the track. And as we head into our home stretch, we would like to salute these maniacs, the guys and girls who live for sports, who paint their bald heads with school colors, and have every button on their remote controls tuned to ESPN. Those who get married on football fields and plan their vacations around the All-Star break. The poor souls who carry their favorite baseball cards in their wallets and name their kids after Vince Lombardi or Red Auerbach, you know, people like you and me. Just about does it, sports fans. You've witnessed a potpourri of sports bloopers, including football follies, golf jollies, horse bowling, car rolling, hockey hits, dangerous pits, baseball bopping, and horse hopping. We'd like to leave you with one fan who makes a mad dash that ends in a bad crash. Hope you've enjoyed the video. This is Chris Berman saying, see you next time. Best swing I've ever seen. We got all that. We're good. We're good.